This program is brought to you by the City of Oceanside. The following program does not necessarily reflect the views, opinions, or policies of the City of Oceanside, its elected officials, KOCT, its board of directors, or staff. This program is underwritten in part by Waste Management of North County in Oceanside. We are dedicated to serving customers and community as a safe, comprehensive service provider, a good corporate citizen, and a responsible environmental steward. Think green. Think waste management. Hello and welcome to Oceanside Spectrum, the Oceanside High School edition. I'm your host, Bella Caius, and we have an amazing show for you today. To get things started, we have special guest, Oceanside High School's new principal, Dr. Villarreal, will discuss his personal background and professional pathway to becoming the principal at OHS. Then we will continue the discussion, focusing on the state of the school, including review on how the year has been going and what he has planned for the future. Next, we'll be discussing equity in the book Stamped with Dr. V and OHS student, Kalia Berry. And last but not least, we will speak to OHS class of 2021 Ballad Victorian Kaleo Hernandez and Salutatorians Kylie Henschel and Juliana Ryder. Get ready because Oceanside Spectrum, the high school edition, starts now. Hello and welcome back to Oceanside Spectrum, the Oceanside High School Edition. I am here in the awesome KOCT studio where the show is produced each spring. We begin with a conversation with Oceanside High School Principal Dr. V. Real to talk about himself and his background. So Dr. V, how, what was like your childhood like growing up? So I grew up in the small town of Blythe, California and I can't believe I'm here at Oceanside. And I grew up as a farm worker kid and really learning with my hands and learning the culture of, I'm Mexican, so I'm born in California, so I consider myself Mexican-American, and I am a first-generation uh, student, I guess, or youth here, and I am actually a proud father of Nathan Macario Villarreal and Noah Manuel Villarreal and my lovely wife, Sarah, so we live here in North County. Oh, nice. What, what, was, like, what was it like growing up? Well, I would say it, it, was, it was a learning experience because I had to really learn how to manage my stress because I grew up, I don't say I grew up poor uh, because I was rich with family. You know, my parents were not perfect, yet they taught me so much about how to stay, you know, we always say echele ganas, meaning don't give up. And that really got me through a lot. So I really feel like that is what's gotten me so far in life is they taught me how to be resilient. Now I see you do a lot of like Instagram lives to school and things. Um, you're kind of all over Oceanside, I see, and it seems like you really like connect with the kids, going to like sports events and things. Yeah. How 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 do you do that? Well, I, I try to do that because I started as a counselor, and I really try to connect with students. And it's funny because a lot of students still don't know who I am because of my mask. So I go to these sporting events and I just walk by and they don't know who I am, or they think they know who I am, but I don't. It's the Instagram thing for me. I really felt I needed to find a way to connect with, with them, and Instagram Live has been that for me. Okay. I also saw when you did, like, home visits and different things like that. What was that about? Well, I wanted to go out, and I did 50 home visits in the fall in this pandemic because I felt like that was something I needed to do to show our students who are most in need how to reconnect with the school because we were so disconnected in this pandemic. It was probably the best thing I ever did. I went from South O to the Valley, uh, to across the street from our campus, to over the bridge. Uh, I know where the donut shops, are, donut shops are now and the fast food places. Uh, I learned so much about Oceanside doing that. I see you're in the community a lot. You, yeah. you like to be a part, of, I, you are a part of the community, <laughs> oh, but you, you like to go out and kind of interact with the community. I see those types of videos on Instagram a lot too. Yeah, thank you. I really try to be more connected with who the community is rather than tr them trying to connect with who I am because I really feel like if I can connect with the community, I can reach that student that is really lost right now in their life. What was the journey like through being a counselor and like becoming the principal now? What was that like? Well, I started off at Vista Magnet Middle School where I was a principal, I founded that school and then I was at assistant principal. I, went, I even worked at the juvenile court and community schools with students who were incarcerated and a lot of them looked like me and sounded like me. And it made me wanna find communities like Oceanside High 
where I can try to reach them before they get there. So it's been a challenge, but very rewarding. I'm having a lot of fun with what I'm doing. How, how does it feel to be here and be going through everything that you went through? Like, how does it feel to finally, like, I guess you could say be at the top in that yeah. sense. <laughs> Oceanside High is no joke. It's 114 years of tradition, and I told all the alumni I'm trying not to mess it up, <laughs> to be honest with you, because the, the pride here is intense, and I hope one day I can say, once a pirate, always a pirate. Did you enjoy the journey <laughs> to becoming <laughs> a principal? I did. I did enjoy the journey. Uh, you know, it's, it was rough, though, I'm not going to lie. Having to open a school with the economic downturn was really tough. Trying to instill upon a community that something mattered was kind of a selling point. And that's what I'm trying to do here at Oceanside High is trying to tell our story our way. And that's why you see me on social media, on my Wednesday live shows, really trying to share uh, the power and influence that Oceanside High has. How do you enjoy doing like your lives? Like, do you try, do you do them every week? Do every you Wednesday I'm on live every Wednesday and I'm committed to that. There was one Wednesday I almost didn't make it, but I just forced myself to do it. And I've had the fire chief on, the division chief on, the, fire, the police department, uh, various alumni. It's, it's a, a lot of fun. Thank you. We will be back shortly and continue our conversation with Oceanside High School Principal Dr. V in just a moment. Flu season is here, so now is the time to consider getting a flu shot to help reduce your chances of catching this season's flu. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, the flu shot is the best protection against contracting the flu. The cost of a flu shot is often covered by your health plan. Check your benefits documents and will your health plan and schedule an appointment today by calling your physician or visiting your local pharmacy or convenience care clinic. Many employers also offer flu shot clinics in the workplace. For more information, visit flu.gov. This message is brought to you by United Healthcare and this station. Welcome back to this special edition of Oceanside Spectrum, the Oceanside High School edition. We are continuing our conversation with new OHS principal, Dr. V. So what are your plans? Have you been planning this school year with the COVID-19 pandemic and different things? We've been busy. I'll say that I'm really proud of our staff and our teachers. We're big believers in making sure that we lead by staff and teacher driven student centered approach. And we did that this year because even in this pandemic, our own teachers rallied to try to really change our grading practices. And they came to consensus on that. So imagine doing that in a pandemic. I was really proud of them. And then really trying to connect with the alumni was the other part, to really try to understand our history because I am trying to honor our history and at the same time prepare us for our future. So this pandemic really allowed us a, a moment in time to pause, to really connect with you all on Zoom, but at the same time try to really prepare for the next few years ahead. Right, I've heard there's a rumor about these five points you yeah, used. Can, right. can you tell us about that? So the those? first one is on history. I wanna honor that history. We're gonna have a play. This is breaking news, by the way. Oh. We're gonna have a play in the fall, maybe the spring, around the history of Oceanside High. And I'm working really closely with our alumni to do that. The other one is competition. Another breaking news, we're actually gonna have four academic teams that are gonna begin next year, mock trial, Envirothon, which is an environmental science team, a math team, and we're gonna continue with our academic league. And then achievement, we have to get those scores up with all of our students. And we're gonna offer a lot of summer programming around AP boot camp, math, and English, as well as some fun things for all of us. Arts will always be part of it. I'm working on some murals maybe off of Crown Heights neighborhood and maybe in front of the school off of Mission. And certainly at the end, community and service. We have to continue to give back to our community. All of our athletes and coaches next year, particularly the coaches, will be giving back to the community. That is something that is required of them next year. How, with this pandemic, how have you been trying to, we'll say like normalize the school year, you know, make it as normal as possible with students going back? I would say laugh and try to have fun. I mean, it, I, I am a purposeful leader. I do have some intensity about me. I do run 100 miles an hour. If you ask Becky, our <laughs> principal secretary, and I tell people this all the time, I go 100 miles an hour. But the urgency and the fire that I have is because of my upbringing, because I know that the hourglass for our students is turned over. And I'm trying to make sure I try to have enough fun while I'm doing this. And I know that when the day comes where I'm no longer having fun, then I have to pick a different career. So really smiling is big, trying to have fun is big, and then just trying to 
stay as genuine as possible with our community. So what are we, is there any like events or different things that trying to bring in events to make the school year semi more normal? Prom. We're going to do prom, which wasn't going to happen in North County by any high school. And we had a meeting with the North County principals and we're having prom. And so that's such an exciting thing for us to do, as well as we're going to have an in-person graduation. We haven't decided where that is yet, but that is something we're working with the city on. And really just home visits, the clubs we try to have on campus, really try to help to normalize where we are. But I do expect us to come back, hoping everything is fine in the fall. And that's what we're really getting ready for and continuing to make sure we have a really nice opening. With how's like your communication, like reaching out to the parents or students who aren't fully like paying attention to different thing, is there a communication with that part? Yeah, so I'm a big believer in multiple access points to communication. Every Friday I try to call and do an email in Spanish and English. And then the other one is the Instagram Lives. Those we try to do as much as I can, as well as those Wednesday shows. And then I really try to get on Twitter and LinkedIn and other s medias as well as well as just talking to people. And then I send an email out every Friday to about 200 community partners so they can see what we're doing and really stay in touch because I am trying to tell our story. Because truth be told, we have a story that is one of prideful history with athletics and academics. And then there's others from back in the 70s and the 60s that still linger that we're trying to just make sure that we tell our true story. Really proud of where we are at Oceanside High right now. Yeah. That's really cool. And with these events, you know, obviously social distancing, distancing different mm -hmm. things like that too, uh, with being outdoors and stuff. That's, yeah. that's really cool that, you know, <laughs> with this school year and everything, like we can still have different events and different yeah. things like that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We'll be right back after this break to talk about a book stamped with Dr. V and Kalia Berry to discuss the book and how Oceanside High School is dealing with equity and race. Welcome back to Oceanside Spectrum, the Oceanside High School edition. Dr. V and I are joined, are joined on set by OHS student Kalia Berry to discuss the book Stamped and how Oceanside High School is dealing with equity and race. So Dr. V, how did, how, what, what made the school talk about this book? Sir, so it really started last year before I arrived with this uh, course that was begun with Ethnic Studies through Dr. Lawrence in the district office. and. Ms. Cheney, our teacher, and through that really came this book that had arrived prior, and so I read it and understood it, but when I came, I thought, you know, I really want us to focus on equity and awareness, and that goes from the coaches to the teachers, but I knew that it was a touchy conversation, right, especially with what happened with George Floyd, right. what's going on with the movement in our community, and I realized that it was something that we needed to tackle, something that we needed to ensure that we keep moving forward. So during the Wednesday show, I wanted to have a book club that began by Ms. Prather, our teacher librarian, uh, to ensure that we have student voice around this critical issue. However, in the fall, I recorded a race talk that I gave to the teachers to show to their classrooms to just begin the conversation. And so really, it's a focus of ours of equity and awareness, and I'm really glad that we're gonna continue this work moving forward. So Claire, what, what motivated you to read this book? Um, what really motivated me to read this book was around the time George Floyd did happen, I kind of felt the need to like, you know, educate myself on these topics, you know, finally uh, find the root behind, you know, racism, kind of where it came from, the history. And, you know, I kind of went on that journey to finding that. So I picked up the book, you know, that's uh, last summer and, you know, just started reading it like, okay, th I'm, this is one step closer to me educating myself. Right. As, as you're reading the book, 
how did you like feel? What were you learning while reading this book? It was really, a lot of what was said wasn't, it was a surprise, I guess, but it wasn't like too shocking of a surprise. Like it was, I knew what was, I knew, I knew kind of like the basis of it, but it went into, it went into a deeper aspect of it. And a lot of what I learned was kind of like the historical aspects, like historical figures that actually breeded into the thoughts of racism. And it was kind of like inspiring, you know, to keep doing this work. Right, right. Um, as when you were done reading the book, were there any actions you've noticed like other people were doing or were there any actions like you took after reading this book to help make a change? When it came to other people, I was definitely more aware of like racism in like people around me and then just kind of identifying the racism in myself as well because one of the main aspects of the book was racism and kind of racism in yourself. So I kind of looked at that and then, you know, everyone around me. And then kind of actions I took moving forward were I started um, joining organizations and then starting my own originally like way back when. And then, you know, just kind of keeping going with the fire of like everything that I've garnered from that book. Right, so I heard you are trying to start um, a club at Oceanside High School to cause awareness with raci racism and different things like that. Can you kind of explain what like your main goals and like future, uh, future goals and like main like attentions you want with this club? Most definitely, so what we have a couple main goals that we want to tackle with this club. Um, a couple big ones being minority history in schools, um, looking into like police reform, and then another one is big on like um, societal solidarity, you know, being there for our communities, and then just speaking out about racism. Like, it's such a sensitive topic that not a lot of people want to talk about, but it's something that most definitely needs to be talked about. So that's kind of something big for us. We're really just trying to push the um, thought that, hey, racism is a thing, it's very present, and um, we, need, we need more people to speak on. Right, right. Well, thank you for sharing, Kalea. Thank you, Dr. V. Make sure you guys stick around as we will be talking to Oceanside High School valedictorian Kaleo Hernandez and salutatorians Kylie Henschel and Juliana Ryder. Located on 43 acres in Oceanside, California, the Bob Maxwell Memorial Field Municipal Airport is a general aviation airport featuring a 2,700-foot runway. It's fully operational and is a prime destination for North County business travelers and vacationers alike. Fully fenced, it includes safe and secure tie downs, hangars, free parking, patio, and vending area. They offer 24 hour self service aviation fuel, access to grade A jet fuel, and maintenance services. Oceanside is a great place to visit. There's an abundance of golf courses, miles of sparkling beaches, and a wide array of exciting events happening year round. You'll want to visit Oceanside's many happening restaurants, craft breweries, and shops. Aviation visitors can look forward to a free bike use program with trails leading directly to beautiful white sandy beaches and a vibrant downtown area. Skydivers can have an exhilarating time with Go Jump. Other options include biplane tours and helicopter shuttles. Additional operations include a life-saving helicopter medical transportation service. They offer low nightly and monthly tie-down fees. Secure hangers are also available. For more information, please call 760-901-4260 or visit OceansideMunicipalAirport.com. Hello and welcome back. Now we will be talking to Oceanside High School Valley Victorian Kaleo Hernandez and salutatorians Kylie Henschel and Juliana Ryder. So Kaleo, can you explain to us what a Valley Victorian is? You know, there's the textbook definition of a Valley Victorian, um, the person who's highest ranked in their graduating class, highest GPA, and they give the speech at the graduation in front of all of their peers. But you know, I kind of like to think of the Valley Victorian as somebody who's a uh, a leader, um, well-spoken, and really involved with the community, um, just very passionate about their school. Kylie, Juliana, can you explain to us what a salutatorian is? Yeah, yeah, it's the person with the second highest grade point average for all four years combined. 
and this year there's two of us. Yeah, <laughs> and it's based on a weighted scale, so it really depends on like AP classes, how many you take, and the grades you get in those classes. Well, congratulations to all three of <laughs> Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, what steps did you guys take to get to where you are? You know, I'd be lying if I said I did it on my own. I had like a lot of support from coaches, my parents, especially teachers, <laughs> um, friends, um, people at my church. You know, there's a lot of, it's, it really takes a village, um, <laughs> as they yeah. say. Um, and that's one of the great things about Oceanside. We live in such a supporting and diverse community who's all really, all has a lot of pride in just being part of Oceanside. And that's, that's one of the great things. Yeah. And yeah, also really just pushing yourself because, you know, challenging yourself is the only way to grow. And with support from friends and family, it really helps. Yeah, I agree. In my life, my sister has probably been the most influential person. She's older than me, and so I just follow in her footsteps. And she always taught me, like, good work habits. And it's just all really important to have people that you can trust and they can, like, show you the way, you know? <laughs> now, I've, I've heard all of you guys are very hard workers, you know, um, athletic. You two ladies are dancers. I know you do like water polo and different things. How has that influenced, I guess you can say, to where you are, you know? Like, how have you been able to balance your school and both sports and work and different things too, and still being, I guess, top, you can say? <laughs> I'd say it's really about time management and not overworking yourself, you know, knowing a good balance. And I think the th thing about extracurriculars like sports and clubs is that it really teaches you hard work and teamwork and things like that that help you in your academic life. Yeah, we we're all actually part of the school orchestra and that really helped us because it just taught us like to work together and it gives you like a, a community of people who can help you and take the same classes as you, and it's really supportive. Um, I, I think that uh, being a part of sports and extracurriculars really helps kind of like Juju said, create a balance in your life, because like um, just focusing on academics is, is great, but um, I don't know if it's the most fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's really nice to have that uh, team to go back to, whether it be in sports, dancing, orchestra, really builds up your character, builds leadership skills. Um, it's really nice. So do you guys have any idea where you want to go to college? I'm sure getting emails <laughs> from <laughs> all places everywhere. Do you guys have any ideas of where you want to go? Yeah. yeah, it was a really long process, but um, <laughs> I'm going to Baylor University. I got into the yes. Honors College in it, and I will be a biology major on the pre-dental track. Congrats. Thank and you. I'm going to UCI, UC Irvine. And I'm going to be doing environmental engineering. Nice. Good job. Congrats. <laughs> I'm going to uh, Brown University in Rhode Island. I'm going to be concentrating in mechanical engineering. That's cool. Congratulations, all <laughs> three of you. Much. Thank you. Um, do you guys have any advice, like suggestions for the younger students, you know, or even kids who are coming into high school, like anything in general? Yeah, I definitely say the most important thing is to have a like people that to surround yourself by people that you want to be like so Juju and I have actually been best friends since kindergarten <laughs> and we've known Kaleo since like first grade yeah we all and went to um, South, South Oceanside, Oceanside Elementary School and Lincoln Middle School and now we're all at yeah. Oceanside High School together and it's been really helpful to have someone who's like at the same academic level and that can like challenge us to further our education <laughs> and take hard classes and stuff and it's like having a study buddy who can help you through it all anyways. And it's all about that good balance between, you know, clubs and things, you know, having fun, but also getting down to the academics. Yeah, I think, <laughs> a, I think a big thing is uh, taking advantage of all the resources that you have available to you. I know at Oceanside, we've got tons of resources for all types of interests. We've got all these new pathways that are really amazing, helping us out um, and working towards whatever careers we're interested in. Um, especially as seniors, we're looking at the College and Career Center to get all these scholarships and help with the college process. Um, and I think also a big thing is building good habits from the very start. Um, it just kind of, yeah, like they said, we've been this way since like elementary school and it's just kind of stuck with us all the way up till high school. 
<laughs> Thank you, Kaleo, <laughs> Kylie, and Juju. That's all the time we have today. Thank you guys for watching this episode of Oceanside Spectrum, the Oceanside High School Edition. I'm Bella Kayas, and we'll see you next time on KOCT. This program is brought to you by the City of Oceanside.